Hi, church. I, there's a quote that I keep in my Bible that I probably have shared with some of you, but it's about prayer, and I think it's very profound. It says, beware in your prayers above everything else of limiting God, not only by unbelief, but by thinking that you know what he can do. And I think I fall into the trap sometimes of thinking like, oh, not even so much that God can't do that, but that he won't do that. And so I limit my prayers to what I think is a reasonable thing to ask God. But that's not what the Bible teaches us. In Ephesians chapter 3, this is what Paul writes. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And just that phrase there, to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, that really should be what guides our prayers, that we have a God who is able to do far more, far more than we can ever even think to ask, far more than we could ever imagine. And it's that God who calls us to come to him in prayer. And as Paul is giving this kind of benediction in the middle of Ephesians, he's saying that the power that God does this with is that same power that's at work in us. And so we can even ask him for those things about ourselves that frustrate us so much, like habits that we are bound by, or just repeated patterns of behavior that we find ourselves falling into that we think there's no way out. Let's remind ourselves that the God who can do far more can use that power to work in us. And then Paul goes on to say, to him be glory in the church. Well, why is there glory in the church? It's because the church is asking God for far more. The, God, the church is not limiting God. We are not in our just little holy huddles trying to ask God what we think is a reasonable request, but we're stepping out in faith in ways that require God to do far more that we're placing ourselves in his hands and saying, God, we trust you even to know best what is for us, to know that there is far more than we could ask or think. And so even in these difficult times, we're going to say, God, do with us what you please, because we know that your ways are far more than we could even think. And then he goes on to say, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. When we have those experiences of God doing far more, of seeing how God's hand moves in situations, then that's what we share with the generations. That's what we tell our kids and our grandkids. This is what God did in my life. This is what God did for our family. And he is glorified through the generations. So I would encourage you today, and I'm gonna encourage myself, let's not limit God to what we think is reasonable. Let's remember that God is able to do far more than we can ask or think. And then let's come to that God and say, God, in this situation, I don't even know what to ask or think, but I trust that you can do far more and that it will be for my good and for your glory, amen.